so it has different names people call it exercise but oxygen therapy but I've been to places where they give someone a two liter nasal oxygen and send them on a vibrating plate and say it's oxygen with therapy that's not what we're talking about today <laughs> okay and really what we're trying to do is to maximize oxygen delivery okay and the way we do it is we alternate, and we, or we can, we don't always have to, but we alternate the levels of oxygen. We're going from high to short bursts of low and then back to high, and that gives additional benefit, as you will understand a little later. Okay, I have to mention an, man, Dr. Manfred von Arden. I have to give him the credit due because he's been doing all the basic research with this in Germany, uh, extensive research and ending in Germany using it in a lot of different clinics for different disease states. It came over into the States and we started using it for athletes. The Olympians use it, the Broncos have several units. That's kind of where it started and then about five or six years ago we started using it in our clinic and really for the first time getting the experience with patients here in the States with it. And I'll, ex I'll, I'll uh, share that experience. So we're going to talk a little bit about what happens with the blood vessels. Um, as we get inflamed our blood vessels, our vascular tree, the trees that go spread out in little tiny little you know twigs, they get inflamed too and so they get swollen. Now when your vascular tree gets swollen, towards the end it gets so swollen there's almost no blood going through. When that happens you're not going to get enough blood flow and you're not going to bring enough oxygen into the tissues. Okay, so um, what we see here is we see a, um, a, a little tiny little blood vessel and we see that there's not that much space for the blood cell. And here we see that the, the blood cell is totally flattened. And here we see that there's more space for it. And that's what happens after you give oxygen. Because once you give oxygen, the cells are able to get the energy to normalize the, the cell function, the doors and the windows that surround the cell, they start opening and closing again. That takes energy to do that. So once we get the energy inside the cell by giving more oxygen, it opens up the doors and the windows and gets all the excess superfluous stuff out. So the, the toxins get out, the swelling comes down, and when the swelling comes down, then the twigs open up again. And once the twigs open up again, we get consistent more oxygen in the system. And it stays that way. So it is getting it to the point where we open up the system so it can stay open, so that everything gets oxygenated correctly. Um, just go real fast over this. It's, in, it's very interesting and important to know that our body uses um, different levels of oxygen. Our heart and lungs, this is the numbers behind it, you can look at it, it's 22. And if you look at the skin, huge organ, the skin covers all of you, so it's a huge organ, 50, and the liver, 40. And I say these things because when we start using uh, the oxygen for the first time, it is our liver, our spleen, our large organs that start taking it in. So the very first time that I usually see someone on the machine and they start exercising and breathing at 100% oxygen, at a little moment into the moment into the exercise, their oxygen goes from 100% to 98% because the big guys suck it up, and then they release again and it goes back to 100. And then a little while later again to 98. So the, for the first three minutes, that very first time, I usually see this going on until the, the organs are satisfied that they got their share and then we're ready to start really going digging deep into the exercise. I think what is extremely important to understand is that oxygen means energy. Healthy oxygen levels in the, in the body means that you have healthy energy levels in the body and when you have healthy energy you're able to function better. Okay, so I sometimes explain to the patients when you start the LIVO2 system, when you start oxygenating your body in the correct way, you come in as a little truck, a little old dinghy truck, and you walk out like a Ferrari because you'll function that much better. 
just a couple of things here again. Oxygen with glucose produces energy. Now, if we, our body is able to make um, some energy without the oxygen, but if you look at the difference, if we do it with oxygen, we get 38 to 34 ATPs, which is our energy molecules. If we do it without oxygen, we only get two. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this because it's important. If our cells don't have enough energy to produce or to make what they're supposed to, is when things start going wrong. Now, things go wrong when cells are not able to produce hormones. And we see hormonal disruption. We see you cannot produce insulin or you make too much. You, there's a problem with glucose. You're going to get inflammation. If our cells don't have enough energy to reproduce and they start making mistakes in replication process, you're going to get problems. Well, in the brain, this is very important. In the brain, it's very important to get the correct protein production for replication. If you do not have enough energy, so not enough oxygen, not enough energy, that process goes wrong. And when it goes wrong, then the brain is not able to protect, protect itself correctly. And when that happens, you get inflammation in the brain. Overwhelm leads to inflammation. And so that is the primary process that leads to what we call the neurodegenerative disorders, such as Alzheimer's, such as dementia. And we see it more and more in our society. And this is going to be, or it is already a major issue, and it's going to be even a bigger issue because we have more and more toxins, more and more stressors. So what we're seeing now is that people are starting getting these symptoms of dementia, of forgetfulness, of not functioning correctly earlier. We used to see them when you would be late in your 70s. Now I start seeing them in the 60s, early 50s. And it has to do with stressors and toxins leading to not getting enough energy into the cells, leading to problems replicating and leading to inflammation and that stops everything else. Okay, you guys know this one, so. So, I want to talk about this. Um, Dr. Von Ardenne did everything in the laboratory, and it wasn't very applicable to the public. So, where the difference was made here with LIVO2 is that we were able to make this ready for the public by making a huge reservoir get out of the laboratory into the public, read, breed out of a huge oxygen reservoir. So, we started using it for. Um, athletes and then later for patients. So after a while getting experience with just breathing the oxygen in the exercise, we realized that it was good, it was great, but not fantastic. Why? Well, the heart gets lazy. If you exercise and you get all the oxygen you want, then the heart starts beating at a lower pace again because things are getting easy. So what we realized is we have to do something else to push the heart to work harder because we want it to work harder. You want to create a turbulence when, you, when your heart is pumping really hard it creates a certain turbulence in the blood and you get a nice mixture with all the extra oxygen. So we looked at what happens when you're in high altitude. You've heard about these, these soccer teams that go up into the mountains to get high altitude training. Why? Well because it gives them an edge, it gives them a benefit. And so we looked at what happens is that it improves the oxygen transport and utilization. So we incorporated that into this oxygen therapy. And we provide now not only high oxygen, but also low oxygen. So we can switch the levels that gives added benefit. Also, when people have, and I see those a lot, when people come into the clinic and they're not able to exercise to the fullest to get a heart rate up where we want it, by depriving them of the oxygen for a little bit, that will drive the heart rate up and we get them where we want to. So it gives some other benefits there. All right, you've seen the bags, right? The large component and the, the little bit small component. You've seen the system. All right, I'm gonna talk a little bit about altitude. Um, 
to, just for you to know how this works, it, it, the, when you go to the low, the, the low uh, oxygen reservoir, which is why we call it Mount Everest or you know, the um, high altitude training, it's 10,000 plus where you're at. So wh I don't know, what the, what's the altitude, the altitude here? Okay, so for you it'll be 3,500 plus 10, so 13,500. 13, so you would be in, you bring it down to 13.2% oxygen. So I use this, this chart really quick. I train at 7,500, so in Los Alamos, it goes down to 11% oxygen when we do it. When we switch from high to low, it goes to a low of 11%. So based on where you're at, you can figure out how low this goes. And I use this quick, uh, it's a very simple uh, target heart rate chart. Um, most of our patients are beginners and the amazing thing is that within five to seven sessions I have them training like an advanced trainer. <laughs> it's really amazing how fast they improve. All right. I don't need to go, do, do I need to go over the protocols? No, right? You guys, you guys know the, pro the, the basic protocol. You get warmed up, you get your heart rate up, you get your heart rate up. How do you get your heart rate up is whatever you like. You like to row, you like to bike, you like to walk on a treadmill. You want to, if, like, like, if you don't like running, like I do not like running. Never liked it. I'm a skater. I can't do it with live or two. <laughs> we have to develop a little <laughs> backpack of it. So I use a combination of how, how fast can I walk and if that's not good enough, I'll bring my incline up. So you play with it until you get that target heart rate that, you, that, that you're aiming for. Um, and so you do that for 15 minutes. Um, and what I'm seeing after five years of clinical experience is that it's amazing how fast we get people from doing almost nothing to doing two miles a day. I mean, I've had people coming in in a wheelchair and they start walking half a mile a minute, uh, half a mile. <laughs> and then three weeks later, a mile twice a day with the EWOT system. That, that is just, there's nothing else that I've seen in rehab that does that. All right, we talked about this. Okay, so what uses, again a little recap of what uses, performance training for athletes. Um, we can push them, you can push athletes harder, they can go beyond their usual capability and they don't have to pay for it with pain the next day. There's no lactic acid built up because you will flush your lactic acid out during the training. So you can do the push-ups, the lifting, you know, in my garage I have the system connected to a little sauna and to an uh, exercise machine and we can just push harder and build those muscles. So, how do you present it to your clients? Very simple. Here's what I use. I say, we're going to flood all the nooks and crannies of your vascular system with oxygen, which causes the cells to get the energy to dump their garbage, which includes toxins and excess fluid. This then leads to immediate inflammation reduction and optimal cell function which then causes your metabolism to get a boost, which is why you can get really hot during the session. Now, anyone has done this a few times, especially if you start going really up to pushing yourself and you switch back from high oxygen to low oxygen, when you come back to the high oxygen, when all the oxygen goes in and the cells get it's like getting a flame, like a whoosh, going through your system and people start sweating. And this is because no, you're now recruiting everything you got. And you're working on 100%. So my clinic is a garbage collecting clinic, meaning we do detox in any way or form we can. And so for me, the, the, I, I started with a level two thinking, I want, I want to get more toxins out. So it flushes metabolic waste and toxins out of the tissues. You get it out through sweating. You get it out through your breath. And very often, especially when, when the body is ready to let go, we start smelling things. And I tell the patients, it's a good smell, because they feel bad, you know, because they're smelling. But I say, no, good, you are releasing stuff. Sometimes, it's, sometimes it smells like uh, a burnt coffee, or sometimes it's a garlic type of smell. And we even had um, 
on one of the conventions we trained someone and at the third session into the 15 minutes this person was expelling a mold vapor we all sat back it's like oh my god <laughs> but it was very noticeable he was getting rid of mold that was stuck in the lungs and afterwards this person was able to function at a much higher level immediately notice improvement I also use this, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit later, in combination with other detox modalities. It enhances everything else that I do. Okay, this is important for people with um, adrenal issues, with frequent infections, with frequent colds, and of course for the cancer patients. So Von Arden has said 17% upregulation in lymphocytes and measurable increases in motility. Now let's talk about it for a little bit. When we eat sugar, which is a toxin, we kind of paralyze our lymphocytes, our white blood cells. And I used to show this to the patients. I used to work with a, um, a doctor of oriental medicine that had a microscope, a dark field microscope. So we would do a finger stick and look and put it immediately under the microscope and look what would happen to all our cells. And after you eat sugar, those lymphocytes just go like, they're not moving, right? And so when you do, do this oxygen, it brings them alive. It brings them active and ready to fight the invaders. And that's what you want at all times, especially in cancer patients. So I love to tell my patients, come up for a boost before you go into the airplane, which is a really toxic affair. Um, or if you feel you're getting cold, come up and let's do a session. Oh, but I'm tired. I go, yeah, but you're going to feel so much better afterwards and absolutely they'll feel so much more af better afterwards for inflammation of course i explained this is going to dump toxins this is going to dump the swelling the swelling is what you know what gives you the pain and so when people have chronic or even acute inflammatory issues a few sessions with the liver two brings it down immediately um, Actually, I have to tell you for this morning, I, I, I misstepped yesterday, my knee was hurting, I was kind of almost limping a little bit. I did 10 minutes on the unit and it's gone. It's gone, I don't feel anything anymore. I'm, I'm not walking normal that fast, that fast, one session. Um, focal cords, focal cord swelling, I, I see. <laughs> and um, two, was it two years ago? Two years ago I went to a meeting and I missed, we couldn't go on, we, we got from Dallas, the plane, so I had to sleep or not sleep in Dallas airport because they put those things in between the benches, you can't sleep. So I got at the meeting, I was really tired, and they said, you know what, we know that you sing, let's, um, let's, let's, let's put this on tape. So I sang, and I was embarrassed. I did the session for 15 minutes on the bike, and I sang again, and when I sang again, everybody came out of the convention hall and looking at who was singing there. It was that much of a difference. 15 minutes exercise, that's it. So now my range, I'm, I'm doing this regularly, so now my range has really increased. All just with oxygen therapy. So um, I use it um, with other things, like I said. I like to have IVs running that are taking toxins out or help to reduce inflammation because again I deal with really very sick patients. Um, and again, one session, while the IV is running, remember what happens when you do the session, you open up the vascular tree. So when everything is wide open, my IV goes in, guess what, it goes to the tissues that usually wouldn't be getting that much. So it's going to be way more effective. We talked about athletic performance, pulmonary function. Let's talk about improvement of pulmonary function. Um, I've had patients that say, well, I can't exercise because I have exercise-induced asthma. And then you feel like, oh shoot, you know, we're going to put them on a treadmill, what's going to happen? Well, I have been measuring these patients and I do pulmonary function tests in office before and after a few treatments. And what I see is what usually a pulmonologist doesn't see. You see actually an improvement of all the lung function parameters, just with a few sessions which means things have opened up and the oxygen use becomes way more efficient because of that. And there's no wheezing. There is no wheezing because you get rid of the swelling 
and then there's no wheezing. Things open up. Um, I talked about the lactic acid. <laughs> the legal natural performance enhancement. I'll give you a little story on that one. I was training an athlete and this guy was, doing, was getting ready for a triathlon. Really high level training, like crazy. You know, all Saturday training. I trained him. He goes back with his buddies. He does his high profile Saturday morning thing. And he noticed that when he gets to the point where he usually goes, okay, now I'm going to have to really, you know, stop thinking and go for it. He says, I got a second wind after one session. I got a second wind and I outran everybody. So afterwards they asked him, hey, did you kind of, you know, do something? <laughs> did you shoot yourself up at something? No, it was one session with Livo 2. Such a remarkable difference with one session. And it's legal, because what are we doing? We're using oxygen brain function. Here is where for me right now is the most amazing, where I see the most amazing results. It's the most gratifying for me. Um, people with traumatic brain injury, and this can be just from multiple accidents, multiple whiplashes, or I've seen several veterans that come back from the Middle East, and they've been exposed to nasty stuff, concussions and more, and I'm noticing that even these people come and they've already had a lot of neuro rehab and they're at a plateau and they're told, okay, this is the best we're going to get you. And they come to the clinic and I see after six or seven sessions, I see they start driving the car again. They are able to go shopping. They don't get lost. They have a better memory. Um, I have people that are bilingual or multilingual that are able to tap into the other languages again. These are not things that I used to see in before I used the system. So this is a very, very promising tool for treatment of traumatic brain injury and also for post-stroke patients. You, stop, you, you revascularize areas that are kind of hidden because they're not functional, but you forcefully revascularize them but, and you get the oxygen in and things start functioning again. You start recruiting cells that we thought we could never do, and, and they are there. Definitely we're seeing a functional improvement. Okay, I'm just gonna zip through this because this has all about, this is really about brain. Um, Just, I want to stop at this slide because it's such an awesome one. With the Brain O2 protocol that we have, actually you can find it online with the LIVO2, you can get up to 24 times, 24 times uh, norm, the amount of normal oxygen levels in the brain. Okay. So let's talk about a few cases. Um, this is a case of a 25 year old man has had 10 concussions and has, has gotten into major depression, dropping in grades, memory loss, accident prone, um, drop in social skills, tremors, brain fog, an inability to play the music, functional scale of, the, of, self, of, 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 of 1 to 10 self-assessment, he feels he's a 5. He's just half at what he should be. There are many different ways to look at brain function. You can get neuropsychology testing, which is a day testing, or you can use an online program. It's called CNS Vital Science. I just want to mention this because it is very suitable. They did research on that, and it's, but the conclusion was it's very suitable to use as a screening instrument, also as a serial assessment measure. So before and after a few sessions, and you can see the difference. So this case here, you see that before and after, um, after one hour and after two weeks, in most of all of these, there is an improvement noted. Again, that's, that's, that's just, this is not a drug. <laughs> this is not surgery. This is just exercising with oxygen that can make this much of a difference. Another case, 62-year-old female, three concussions, she has back pain, neck pain, unable to work, her, there's asymmetry in the eyelids and the mouth, uh, she has digestive issues, um, she, is, she has brain fog, clouding of consciousness, she has brain fog, and she has chronic fatigue and a you know, pretty low muscle tone. Again, looking at the CNF file signs, before and after.
If you just look at the VS, uh, the, the, the average score here, it's 46 to 72. I don't know anything else that does that. I, in medical school, they did not teach me about some, someone being able to get this much improvement, especially in this short area of time. So recovery of, as a summary here for this lady, recovery of 50% of cognitive fatality and 90% of mental, mental flexibility. All right. Levo 2 in the clinic, in our, in our clinic, again, it is used for um, improvement of, of athletic performance, but we use it uh, for a lot of uh, chronic problems. So that's the setup in my clinic. I have a um, treadmill and I have a bike. I also have a recumbent bike that you don't see in the picture for people that are unable to sit upright or stand. And I use two pulse oximeters. And the reason that I do that in my clinic is because, again, I have pretty sick people coming in. I'm an anesthesiologist, so I like to monitor. And I monitor the ear as well as the finger. And there's discrepancies in these two, which I had not expected. So um, when people have a very slow circulation, we're going to see a big difference there. As they improve, then we see the difference becoming smaller, which to me is also an, a sign of progress. So I stand there watching my client, having my finger on the unit and watching all the numbers. So let me give you some examples of, of my personal experience there. The traumatic brain injury symptoms in patient number one. This patient presented with fatigue, confusion, concentration problems, memory problems, difficulty decision making, insomnia, depression and, and anxiety and mood swings and irritability. And I was getting a lot of these patients and what I found was that because of all this injury you have to really be giving them everything in writing. You, they become disruptive, <laughs> they're difficult to deal with and it's really because of the underlying issue. She also had headaches, balance problems. A lot of times once you have a brain injury it leads to multiple other injuries because of the initial injury, because you're not, you're not steady, you're not able to see what's safe, you know, um, decision making is, is not right, there's inappropriate behavior. So this one's 47 year old when she first came and um, she was telling that whenever she would do anything, like going for a drive to another city, it would take her days to weeks to come back out of that. So lack of rebound this is very, very common that you hear that in patients with brain injury also that ha and that they have that combined with adrenal issues. So no rebound. She had significant concentration and memory problems, very irritable. And um, when we started on, on the system, um, Actually, before we started on the system, I was trying to do everything else in, in the functional medicine way and I, had, I worked with a thyroid, I worked with adrenal support, with supplements, high dose vitamin C infusions, um, re reduction of toxins, sauna, and we got a better, but it wasn't, she wasn't back to a 9 or a 10. She was kind of plateauing. So then we started her on the LIFO2 in, in January 2012. And um, she was in that year where when we started, we monitored the heck out of everybody because we weren't sure what to expect. So we put them on a 12 lead EKG. We treated them like severely you know, sick cardiac patients. So we were just all over them. And we realized none of these patients ever got into any trouble with this. They all got better. So we did that and she walked <laughs> five minutes on the first session and her blood pressures went really really high she got some arrhythmia um, and then she walked 20 minutes on session nine and blood pressures had come down there was no abnormal heart rhythms with her and she was already starting to report much less fatigue and this was someone with a history of 10 plus years of having this horrible fatigue and no one knew what to do with. I mean, she was sent to a psychiatrist and told her, it's, you know, cause, and when usually when in conventional medicine, when they don't know what to do, they say, well, go to the psychiatrist because it must all be in your head. So she wasn't willing to accept that and come to our clinic. So one mile set in, in, 20, in 20 minutes by session 30, and that's when she finally started to give up her toxins. It took a while for this one to trigger, but at session 30, she started to smell. 
because the body is kind of protecting itself. If you're very, very toxic, then it's not so easy for your body to sweat or let go because it has to go through your body. You're gonna, you lo- usually you might feel worse before it gets better. So it took her 30 sessions, unusual. I usually get them to sweat in eight, eight or seven sessions, but, but the 30 sessions, she started to smell. She has maintained higher sustained energy levels, less lack of rebound. She goes partying every now and now. Um, and she uh, continues with weekly maintenance sessions. So she comes once a week and just keeps going that way. Her thyroid labs have improved. I had to decrease her thyroid medication. And her adrenal function, her cortisol levels have improved and they stay that way. These are things that in regular medicine you usually don't see. And we see it just by adding this to the system. This is um, the first or one of the very first sessions with her. This is actually a paperwork that you used to use for a stress test. (laughs) Because we did it like a stress test. Um, And this is um, a recent one where she has a beautiful little dip. So she starts exercising. Her heart rate starts at 68. She's 100% saturated. She runs at three minutes. She starts running. And then with the income of six, she goes down to a saturation of 80. Sorry, she goes, she goes down to a saturation of 80 and the heart rate goes up to 138. And then she goes right back up. And she does that three times. So what we learned in the first two years is was there was no need for 12 lead DKG. Um, the double monitoring of the ear and the finger gave additional information. There is improvement noted to different degrees in every single patient. Not everybody does the same thing. And most patients do have lasting improvement after 8 to 10 sessions. And patients that are usually not able to sweat are starting to sweat usually after 6 to 8 sessions. Another patient here, 60, 56, and this was very dramatic. 56-year-old female, 19-year history of traumatic brain injury. She was in coma. Uh, she had to learn to walk and talk. She was in rehab for seven years. And that, had, that happened 19 years earlier. So she comes to our clinic 18 years after the brain injury. Severe fatigue, brain fog, balancing problems, confusion, speech problems. Um, she was raised Spanish speaking, but she was raised multilingual. And when she had to learn how to speak again, they taught her English. So she had this vague memory of speaking Spanish in the past. She had a lot of body pains, a lot of spasms. She was in our intensive program with combination of IV therapies and the LIPO2 sessions, saunas and coffee enemas. We're very big on coffee enemas. Um, and we, did, we had her do two sessions a day. Within a month, only one month, remember 18 years, and now one month later, she started sweating after seven sessions, she started having her memory back, her speech and confusion improved, less balance problems, and we started speaking Spanish. Which was really amazing for her to be able to go back to her mother tongue. All right, so... This is another, I have to zip to this, so this is another example of she's able to go from 3 miles an hour to 4 miles an hour and she drops to uh, 84, heart rate of 138 and goes right back up. In 30 seconds she's right back up to 100% saturation. All right, um, one more case. 70 year old male, rapid onset of painful swollen joints, severe fatigue, muscle wasting, no one knew what was going on. There was some sort of inflammatory thing going on, but it wasn't, it wasn't rheumatoid arthritis or any of those typical you know, inflammatory diseases. He comes in a wheelchair. His muscles are definitely wasting. He's thinning out. And his set rate, a sign for inflammation, was 33. So I thought, this is a reactive arthritis. I don't know what it is too. We gave him IV therapies, liver 2, twice a day, um, homeopathy, a very short course of prednisone, and dietary modification. He, we see him at 1.5 miles an hour, heart rate, the highest I got him was 112, and here we see him three weeks later, he is going up to 3.5 miles an hour, he's doing two miles a day, and he gets his heart rate up to 128. Three weeks. 
from wheelchair to two miles a day. So he actually went home, didn't follow through with doing exercise, had to come back to the clinic and this time I said, you're going to do it on your own. You're going to do the whole program, you can use the clinic, you're going to do it on your own. He went home again in good condition and at home there is a package waiting for him <laughs> that needs to be opened. And um, so he can continue doing it at home for maintenance. So after five years, um, every single pa there's just not one patient that does not benefit from using the system. It's good for everybody. If you keep the heart rate high for an additional 30 seconds after switching back to the high O2, it gives them the best results and it gives them that sensation of the flash heat. So you want to have them exercise hard, even really hard at the top for an additional 30 seconds before you go back to a regular exercise level for in between the low dips. Um, most patients notice improvement in energy levels and mental clarity immediately after the session. And patients that are unable to sweat are able to start sweating after an average of six to eight sessions. Lasting improvements are usually very noticeable after six to eight sessions. Hormone function improves with an increase in the detox effect. And some patients with chronic conditions continue to benefit weekly or bi-weekly for maintenance. It depends again what is an underlying issue. If they have an underlying issue, like I have a patient with post-polio syndrome, okay, this guy has muscle wasting, it's an ongoing issue, we found that sweet spot that if he comes every two weeks, he's going to be good. If he stays way longer, he's going to start going down a little bit. So it, it's different from, for every single person depending on stressors, toxic, re toxic re-exposure, which we all have, and underlying disease. <coughs> if I use IV glutathione with the LIVO2, it if gives an immediate, amazing reduction in inflammation. It's like the highest form of getting total reduction in 15 minutes. Um, exercise with oxygen enables the very sick and the sedentary to start exercising without exhaustion and increase in pain afterwards, which allows for the possibility to finally start the substantial healing process. These patients come in, they are prunes, they are contracted, they do not want to move because it's going to hurt, they think. Once we get them past that very first session, when they realize, I can do it, I'm able to talk, walk it out, and I'm not hurting afterwards, actually I'm feeling a little bit better. Once you get them there, you get them to exercise, and it becomes a spiral upward out of their issues. We like to put a mirror in front of the exercise machine because they can look at themselves and they can see themselves exercising and it's a positive reinforcement. And we give them patients, a lot of our guys when they come for the intensive program, they end up getting a unit for themselves so they continue doing this at home. So for me, game changer. After all these years with the LIVO2 now on top of it, it's really uh, made all the difference. And using it with IVs gets a big deeper into the tissues. We also have some other techniques that we add to it. We use the ECP machine, um, which is cuffs around the legs and the waist, squeezes while you have an EKG running, certain timing of the EKG, brings more blood to the heart, brings more blood out of the heart, trains the heart muscle, was made for patients with heart disease. We do it with oxygen and then put them on the EWOT afterwards. Again, much faster recovery. I've had patients with a heart failure um, that have a function 25-20% where the muscle does like this, right? They do the ECP, we do the EWOT, they go back to 40 to 60%. I've had cardiologists tell my patient, um, this is not possible, this echo, there's something not right, probably my technician didn't do it right the first time <laughs> because they can't explain it. Okay, we have something else called Juvent. It's um, a, a vibrating plate, very specific, calibrating the person that stands on it. And you stand on it for 20 minutes. We do it a bit in conjunction with the, the LIVO2. And it helps um, to heal osteoporosis. It improves nerve problems in the feet for diabetics. So we like to use a whole little, um, you know, ECP, Juvent, EWOT, and then they go into the sauna. 
Once we get you to sweat, we'd like for you to continue sweating in the sauna to get it all out. You stir the pot and you want it out. I'll mention coffee enemas real quick because I really love them because they work so well and you can tell the patient to do it at home. I don't need to give them an IV. And the coffee enemas increase the glutathione. That's what they're for. It's not for the coffee, it's not for the caffeine. It is to get your liver to produce your glutathione, to increase your glutathione production by about 700%, which is a nice little detox moment. And I love to do it in conjunction with, again, the liver to system because it's become the added uh, efficiency. Okay. Two minutes left. I have one more thing to say. When people come to us and, and, and you know, when people have chronic disease, yes, they get depressed. Yes, there's going to be psychiatric things going on. A lot of times it might have been some stressor or some big psychiatric thing that influenced the whole disease process. It's a chicken and egg type of thing. What is clear though is if you get so tired or you feel so sick that you don't have the energy for anything, you especially will not have the energy to deal with those underlying issues. So when we do a very intensive program with them, usually by day four, when they already start dumping quite a bit of toxins, those things come up and we deal with it. So usually counseling sessions by day four are extremely important. The issues in the tissues come out. And that's it. Questions? Have you had any other experience with any other neurodegenerative diseases besides Alzheimer's? Parkinson's. Parkinson's. Yeah, I've had a patient with Parkinson. Didn't go away. It was pretty late, but definitely improved. All the movements, getting out of the chair, initiation of walking. Um, yeah, really works. Okay. ALS? No. No, have no, no, haven't had any ALS patient come for it. Yeah. So what you're just talking about is that what you call the issues in the tissues? The issues in the tissues, the, the psychological stuff. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's quite. I mean, some. I mean, some, when you talk to a massage therapist, they'll tell you this. When you go for a massage and all of a sudden in the middle of the massage someone starts totally crying and this is the issue in the tissue that shows up. It's real and you better be ready to deal with it. So this is why I have my hubby there who, who then <laughs> goes, this is your day. <laughs> take, take care of him today. <laughs> and, um, and then when we get to, through it, I mean, when the patient has the energy to go through a huge dumping session and comes out of it then the continuation of the program is now it, we're in different gear now you know now we're really into major healing forever anyone else yeah what's a, like a maintenance protocol yeah you recommend? again that depends on your stressor your toxic exposure what's going on um, you know, I like for me. I like to do it three times a week. I feel on. I, you know, I'm my bright eyed, pushy. That's me, <laughs> right? Three times a week. It really varies. If you can do it at least once a week for maintenance, it's great. Look, we can get someone in a great position, but if you get re-exposed, and we all do, to stress and toxic stuff, we all do. That means that you need to do something to keep cleaning. I mean, I, you know, I have so many patients that talk to me, you know, there's issues with uh, Monsanto and there's issues with GMO and there's issues with chemtrails and there's issues, God knows what, it's all there, right? Well, okay, what can I do about that? Can I bomb Monsanto? I'm, I'm, you know, I can do that. So what can we do for ourselves to take care of that? Well, we're going to have to clean up better. We're going to have to be more thinking about when you get up in the morning that you have to do something besides brushing your teeth to clean up your body. So I, my protocol is I do coffee enemas and I do EWAS. Works for me. Keeps me healthy. Have you had, sorry, Go. Have you had any patients that with a traumatic brain injury and they're not mobile, that passive yeah. range of motion or passive activity? I had one patient that was totally like this. I couldn't get her to get her heart rate up. 
and she was at limes and the problem with the limes is is that they're very temperature sensitive because if I have those that cannot move at all I stick them in the sauna I couldn't stick her in the sauna so with her it wasn't as great as I've seen with other people. I got it to start moving better, but I couldn't get the, the highest therapeutic effect for her. So they would do the, they would wear the... Oh yeah. The oh yeah. Oh, I have a picture of my hubby with the <laughs> evil in the sauna. <laughs> yeah, because again, what you need to do is you need to get them to get the heart rate up. Once you get the heart rate to target and you play with the oxygen, you already get a huge benefit. Now, if you're able to push further with exercise, of course, you get all the benefits for the exercise too. But the heart rate needs to go up to whatever. For me, 140, 150. I push myself to 170. Now that I've been doing it so often, I can 170. And I go down into the 70s. And I feel fantastic afterward. And I'm sweating like crazy. So... Anything else? We're good? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. About what? Insomnia. Insomnia. Yeah. Yeah. People sleep better usually after this. <laughs> so is there a protocol or is it just a I benefit? think just the benefit of reducing inflammation. Insomnia could be hormonal. Yeah. So if you get your hormones to start functioning better, yeah. that would help. I'm talking about me. Uh -huh. sleep. I just did a Dutch test and amazingly, it completely surprised me that my cortisol, my free cortisol, is never goes down. In the morning, so, at night. Oh, really? It, it goes a little bit higher in the day. And, then, and that keeps you up. So, yeah, so normalize. So, the, the question is why is this happening? Yeah. What is the underlying stressor that keeps pushing that up? Is one thing. Yeah, yeah no, most. I'm yeah. working on that. Yeah. So, once you start cleaning up, getting rid of the, te the toxins, and you get your oxygen levels up. I need to start doing this. I had no idea. This is fantastic. It's just no idea that oh, all this was so a benefit. I know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I knew it helped uh, um, somehow. Yeah. <laughs> no. no, it's because the crazy high levels of oxygen that you can get with this, there's not, there's, the hyperbaric chamber doesn't do this for you. Yeah. We're way above that. Yeah. It's crazy because our, our EWAT sit empty most of the time. Please use it. Yeah. <laughs> I did I did my ten minutes this morning, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs>